Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about bears. And this is fresh on my mind for a couple of reasons. The first is that it's probably the single most requested thing I get asked about. Um, how do you safely camp in bear country, basically. And the second reason that uh, this is on my mind is that I saw another bear last week here in Idaho. First bear I've seen in Idaho, but I've now seen bears in Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, Washington, and California. Six states, I've had probably a dozen encounters with bears over the years, both grizzly bears and black bears. Uh, I think I just scared a bear. And so I thought, all right, that's a sign. I should make a video about this. And I'm doing it today while I'm out hiking so that you have a little bit more of an interesting video to watch while basically I just talk. I want to start off by saying that, uh, you know, you should do your own research and do what you feel comfortable with. Uh, I've read several books about bears and bear attacks and everything. And uh, like I said, I've had a bunch of bear encounters and I've done a lot of research online. And so I've put together all of that into this video, but you should still do your own research to see what you think you should do safely. So in this video, I'll be talking about bear safety and car camping. And when I say car camping, I'm talking about two different things here. I'm talking about uh, the way that most people use it, which is you go drive to a campground in your car, whip out your tent and camp like basically next to your car in a tent. And then I'll also talk about sleeping in your car in bear country, which is predominantly what my channel is about, SUV RVing. I sleep and camp in my car a lot. And yes, that includes in bear country. And speaking of bear country, there's bear country in like lowercase letters, and there's bear country in uppercase letters. Lowercase bear country is a place where there are bears, but you could probably go your whole life and only see one, maybe. This mountain range that I'm in now, bears do exist here, but people very rarely see them. The odds of you encountering a bear are extremely low. You could camp in this range and, uh, you know, not really have to think about bear safety too much. I mean, you always want to follow some best practices, but, uh, you know, you're going to be fine. You're not going to see a bear. Most places in the U.S are lowercase bear country. Bears do exist in those places, but they're not like ravenous, crazy bears or anything like that. And there aren't, an, there isn't an overabundance of them. There aren't a lot of bears to the point where it's a problem. But then there's also uppercase bear country. These are places where there are um, either a lot of black bears or the, or the black bears are accustomed to humans or where there are grizzly bears. Places like this would include Great Smoky Mountains National Park, uh, on the East Coast, lots of black bears there. Uh, Yosemite National Park in California, lots of black bears. They're accustomed to people. They know people mean food. Uh, and then, of course, the Yellowstone area, the greater Yellowstone ecosystem, Yellowstone National Park, Grand Teton National Park, and the surrounding contiguous national forest areas uh, where there are grizzly bears and Glacier National Park. Um, basically, more wild places where there are either a lot of bears or where there are grizzly bears. And those are the places where you need to be a lot more careful and a lot more conscious of, of taking precautions. Most of the things that I'll be saying apply to uh, uppercase bear country, but if you're uncomfortable, then you should also apply these things to lowercase bear country camping. And basically there are three main categories of things you can do to safely camp in bear country in and around your car. And the first is to keep smelly items a little bit less smelly. Keep them contained so that the bears aren't attracted to them. Bears are attracted to the yummy smells that they smell around you. Uh, they smell on you, in your camp. That's why they're drawn to you. They're not just malicious killers. If they are in your campsite, it's probably because they smell something. And so we're talking about food, about stoves, about dishes, trash, toiletries, definitely toiletries. 
pet food, even human waste, all of these things can attract bears. And so what you want to do is basically wrap these things in plastic, seal them up so that uh, the scent doesn't get out. Pretty simple, right? Especially with the more heavily scented items, both food and toiletries, you're going to want to put those in a plastic bag. And then I put my food into plastic bins in my car. And so I have food specific bins that I put the, the plastic Ziploc bag uh, food bags into. And then once you've done that, once you've got everything all wrapped up so the bears can't smell it as easily, you're going to want to put that stuff in an inaccessible location. And that's the second main uh, point here that I wanted to cover. Now when you're backpacking, this means putting your food in a bear canister or putting it in a bag and then hanging it uh, away from a, tr uh, a bear so that a, a bear can't get to it. So like hanging it up uh, at least 10 feet up and 4 feet out uh, from a tree. In some national parks with bear issues there will be um, specific backcountry campsites and there will be uh, horizontal poles tied up between trees and you toss your food bag over that horizontal pole and it keeps it out of the reach of bears. But we're not really talking about backpacking or hiking, we're talking about car camping. You can still hang your food. Um, strictly speaking, that's probably the safest thing to do. But if you have like a cooler and a lot of food for several people or for several days, uh, it's gonna be a, a major pain in the rear to have to hang all of that. And I've never really heard of anyone actually doing it uh, when car camping. Sometimes if you're in a place where there's a lot of bear activity or bears are more accustomed to humans, you'll find a campground or a campsite where there are metal bear-proof lockers. They're basically rectangular metal boxes that bears can't get into and so bears can't get to your food and so they wander off and uh, probably don't come back around too often because there's no food for them there. And so if you're not gonna hang your food, which you know, no one does when they're car camping. And if there's no bear locker at the campground or campsite, uh, then what do you do? You put it in your car. And this makes sense when you're tent camping, um, when you're, you know, you've got your tent pitched next to your car. Uh, you definitely don't want to bring food or any other smelly items into the car or into your tent with you. That's just asking for, uh, for trouble there. And so you want to keep it locked in your car, keep the windows rolled up so that, uh, you know, again, the smells will be less likely to get out and attract a bear. And if you're actually sleeping in your vehicle, yes, you also keep your food in there then. Now this might be a contentious thing to say. I think people's initial reactions is that I don't want my food where I'm sleeping, um, but what else are you gonna do? Uh, your food has to go somewhere. You don't wanna put it outside. And uh, you know, again, you can hang it, but if you're not gonna hang it, you have to keep it inside with you. So can bears open car doors? Yes. Um, you know, there are lots of videos online of bears wandering through a street or a parking lot and opening up unlocked car doors. So you're going to want to lock your, uh, lock the doors on your vehicle. And then you're going to say, can't bears rip open uh, car doors that even if they're locked? Can't they open up, you know, the sides of hard-sided trailers? Yes, that has certainly happened, um, but usually it's in places where there's a history of, of bears and humans interacting. So in national park campgrounds, uh, in towns, in the mountains where there's a lot of human-bear interaction. It's not in a, in a wild bear's initial instinct to open up a car. You know, bears are largely opportunistic. They're, uh, you know, they're just looking for a lazy, easy meal. And so from the research I've done and the experience that I've had, I've, again, I've camped a lot in bear country, I feel it's safe to keep your food in your vehicle with you and, uh, you know, I wouldn't keep the windows all the way down, of course. A bear could just reach in or stick its head in. But, uh, you know, you can keep the, keep the windows down a few inches and uh, that should be just fine. And I say that because in the places where the bears have historically opened up cars, like ripped car doors open, there are usually other ways to store your food, like the metal storage lockers at campgrounds or in parking lots. Like in Yosemite National Park, for example, uh, there are signs everywhere telling you not to keep food in your cars and to put it in the, in the food boxes, even at parking lots. And the reason, of course, is that historically, bears have learned to associate cars with food. And so uh, that's a problem there in particular. So again, if you are sleeping in the car, keep the windows mostly rolled up, 
If you're not sleeping in the car, if you're sleeping in a tent next to it, keep the windows all the way rolled up. And that leads us to the third main principle here, which is to basically just keep a clean camp. Again, don't leave food out overnight. Uh, if you're in uppercase bear country, don't cook right next to your camp. Uh, the recommended conventional wisdom is to um, you know, prepare and, and cook your food at least a hundred yards or meters away from your campsite. And don't cook super fragrant items, stick to more kind of mild things. You know, don't cook that, uh, that chicken tikka masala camp recipe you've been trying to, you've been dying to try out. Just keep the camp itself as tidy and fragrant free as possible. I think that cooking food at your campsite in lowercase bear country is just fine, but in uppercase bear country, unless you're like in, a, in an established campground where there's a picnic table right, right next to your campsite, uh, you're gonna wanna be a little bit more careful. But even in lowercase bear country, don't leave stuff out overnight. If the bears don't get to it, then the squirrels and raccoons will. And that's basically it. Those are the three main things. First, keep the smelly items contained. Second, keep those things in a place that's inaccessible to bears. And third, just keep a nice clean camp overall. And this video is mostly about camping in bear country, but as far as hiking goes, uh, I'll just touch on that a little bit. I don't usually carry bear spray in lowercase bear country, uh, except when I'm fishing in places that are a little bit more wild. You know, bears like to hang along creeks and I like to fish kind of more remote creeks. And so even if I'm not in hardcore grizzly bear country, if I am fishing a small creek somewhere, uh, I will carry bear spray. Like in the, in the clip that I showed you at the beginning of this video, uh, I did have bear spray on me then. But basically all of my normal hiking is, uh, is lowercase bear country and I never carry bear spray. When I'm in uppercase bear country, I do carry bear spray when I'm in grizzly bear country or if I'm in a place where there's a, a history of a lot of human bear interactions, even if there are black bears, then I will carry a bear spray then too. For me and, and where I go and the stuff that I do, uh, basically I carry bear spray when I'm fishing and in the Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Park areas. And when I'm sleeping in my car in uppercase bear country, I will keep the bear spray pretty close by and uh, easy, easy to get to in case there is a bear hanging around at night and uh, I just wanna you know, scare it away or whatever. One good thing about being in your car also is that you can honk the horn, turn on the lights, just make a lot of noise and uh, make a commotion as likely to scare any bear away. And finally, I just wanna say that, um, you know, in my experience, the people that are most worried about bears and camping in bear country are the people that have the least amount of experience with it. And the people that live and work and play among the bears the most are usually those who are more, much more measured uh, in their approach and in their feelings on the subject. You don't have to freak out too much. The bears will probably leave you alone. But uh, if not, you know, just in case, you're definitely gonna want to follow these, uh, these best practices that I've talked about in this video here. You're far more likely to have a problem with uh, the dog at your neighboring campsite than, than any bear you, uh, you come across. So that's it for this video. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you have any other uh, tips that you think I left out or things that I got wrong. Don't be a jerk about it. Leave a nice comment and uh, we'll have a nice uh, dialogue down in the comments section. Thanks for watching.